Hi everybody, welcome back to the next part in my video series on writing an iOS app um, with Python and Kivi. In this video, we're going to be working on the Add Workout page. So that'll be this button right here, and the page that I want will look something like this. So it's a pretty complicated page, and there's going to be a good amount of backend stuff, so it might end up that I split uh, this, this portion up into two videos, but we'll see how fast I can get through it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Here I am at my code. First thing I need to do, of course, is create a new KV file for my screen. So this will be add workout screen KV. All right, my class will be add workout screen. Um, and let's get my canvas in there from one of the other screens. So I'll get that blue background going. Um, and then we'll go to our main.py file. And let's get the base class. So class add workout screen, here is new screen, and pass. And then we'll go to main.kv, and we'll get our screen inside of our screen manager so that we can switch to it. So add workout screen name, just following the same syntax that I have. And now for the main.kv file to recognize this class, I have to go include my new add workout screen.kv um, module. Okay, so I'll include that, add workout screen.kv. Remember all these kv slash, that's because I have them inside this little subfolder kv here. Okay. Um, and then let's see. I get to this workout screen from my home screen. So here's my home screen, and I click to get to my uh, add workout screen. So let me go put that screen change functionality in. Um, okay, home screen. Let's see. This is the one I want. New workout button. Okay, so I'll use my main apps uh, change screen function. And I'll go to the add workout screen. All right, let's see if I've set up the, the skeleton correctly. So I'll click that. And here I have my blank screen, which is where I'll add um, all these widgets you see here. So the first thing that I need to do is uh, I need a label and then a scrollable grid sideways, scrollable, and then a label and, um, or sorry, that's a text input. And then I'm thinking maybe this will be a, a, a one grid here, and then maybe another grid for these labels, and then, yeah, another grid. Okay. All right, I think I got that plan. So let's go to Add Workout Screen. First thing will be a float layout as the base layout widget. Um, and then I need that label at the top. So label um, select workout image. Okay. Position hint. We'll just say it's all the way at the top <clears throat> and all the way to the right. And then we'll give it a size hint to take up the full width and maybe 0.05 of the height. Okay. And now let's get my scroll view in there. So this will be the, the sideways scrollable uh, grid of images. So I'll put in the scroll view. And then inside my scroll view, I need that grid layout. Um, and the grid layout has only one row. And now to get a sideways scrollable grid layout inside my scroll view, you need to define four special uh, parameters. And I covered this when I was doing some of the other uh, scrollable features too, but this one's horizontal. so. It's a little bit different. Size hint x has to be none. Um, width needs to be self dot minimum width. Okay, and then call default width. I'll put this to 100 dp, so specifying my units there. And then call force default to be true, to make them all force to be this size. 
and then I'll give this one an ID. I'll call it my workout image grid. And then what I want to do is I want to populate this workout image grid with all of the workout icons that are inside this subfolder. So I'll go ahead and do that now after I quickly give this a size and position. Okay, size hint, we'll have this one be a little bit larger, so 15% of the screen um, in height. And top should be at 0.95, right? Because it should be one minus 0.05. That's fine. Okay, so let's populate this workout image grid as soon as the app starts up. So I'll go over to my main.py file <clears throat> and on start, this is the function that's called uh, when the app starts up. So I've populated my avatar grid there. Now I want to populate workout image grid. All right, and it's going to be almost the exact same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste that code. So instead of avatar grid, it will be workout image grid self.root.ids. It's not in the change avatar screen, it is in the um, add workout screen. And the ID that I gave that grid was workout image grid. All right, and then remember that this, this function, um, walk. So walk pretty much goes through all the, all the files inside a folder that I pass it. So I'll pass it my icon slash workouts folder. Um, and then for each file, I'll create an image button and the image source will be icons slash workouts uh, plus the name of the file. And when I release it, um, I'll just, I won't, I won't do anything yet. No function upon release. Let's just make sure the, the scroll view works. And then workout image grid dot add widget image. Okay, so let's see if that populates. I'll run my code. Oops. Oh. Um, I got an error at my label because I tried to set the text without specifying that it was the text. <laughs> so let's start that again. All right, here's the add workout button. And here I have my workout images and it is scrollable. Perfect. So they'll pretty much just choose one they want. Um, <clears throat> then maybe it'll like highlight that image and then they'll go through and fill out the rest of the form. This one means there's an image not showing up. So let's see if I got an error. Error loading texture, workouts slash DS underscore store. Um, okay, this is some funky hidden file that my OS put there for some reason. So let me go back to where I'm populating my workouts grid uh, for F and files. Let me just make sure uh, the file is an image. Okay, so whatever this thing is, this DS store, it doesn't end with .png. So now if I run this again, it shouldn't have that blank spot in there. Okay, perfect. All right, so that's what I wanted. Now, oh, select workout. How come that didn't show up? Did it show up? It did, select workout image. Nice. Okay, next up is this text input for a description of uh, this person's workout. So let's get a text input here. Um, I'll say hint text. Uh, brief description to let them know what to write there. And then size hint and position hint, I'll copy over. Size maybe should be 0.1 of the height and I'll say 0.8 of the width and then I'll center it. So since I put it to the right at 0.9, that means there's 0.1 on the right and 0.1 on the left of empty space. So it just looks a little bit cleaner. And then I'll give this guy an ID of uh, description input. Okay. 
Uh, let's run it and see what that looks like. Oh, I know for a fact it's not going to look good. Okay, it's overlapping with things because I forgot to specify a new position hint. So this one should be at 0.95 minus 0.15, so it should be at 0.8. All right, let's take a look. Added workout screen. All right, that is what I wanted, but maybe I will, I'll give it a bit more space. So let's move it down to 0.75. Okay, so that'll give me a little bit of spacing. Um, and then back to my my slide here. What did I want? Select quantity option. I think I'm going to omit that text and just put in these three. So I'm going to want a single grid layout that'll have one row. So let's do that. Grid layout, uh, rows one. And I'll put in an image button. And I think what I'll do for these guys is if you click on like one of the images, I'll change the text white so that you know which one you've selected. Okay, so let's, that'll be my plan. So image button source will be icon slash, uh, I think I have a time one in here, time.png, okay. Um, Oh, our grid layout needs a size and position. So let's get that. Okay, size hint should take up the full width. Um, position hint needs to be at 0.75 minus 0.1, so 0.65. All the way to the right. All right. Um, this guy, I'll say on release. So if you press this button, um, let's see, I'll say time label dot color equals one, 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 one. Okay, so this time, lab time label I haven't defined yet, but that will be that label right there. So if I click this button, it'll change this time label text color to completely white, okay? Um, sure, and then maybe I'll say uh, app dot mm, option choice equals uh, self dot, or equals time dot png. Actually, I'll say self dot source. So this is a new variable I'm, de I'm defining for my, my main app class so that when I'm actually sending the form, the filled out form um, to Firebase, I'll see what the app's option choice is and that'll be uh, the identifier for time or for distance or for repetitions or sets or something. Okay, so I'm thinking ahead right there. Um, now let's copy and paste this two more times. This one will be for uh, distance, which I have called 011road.png. That's that image. Okay. And then I'll have uh, time label or distance label dot color is white. Oh, and you know what? If I click the time image and it turns that color, that labels text color white, and then I click this one, they'd both be white. So I better make sure anytime I click one, I set the other ones to black. So I'll say distance label dot color equals black. And then um, I'll call this one my sets, okay? The sets image and the sets label as in how many sets of like pull-ups or push-ups you did, something like that. So sets label uh, color should be black as well. All right, and now if I click on this distance one, and let me rename this image, distance.png, okay, good. 
All right, so distance label should be white, and then time label should be black. So I'll change that. Okay, and then the sets label should also be black. Okay, good. And then this option choice variable for my main app will be um, icon slash distance dot png. All right, that looks good. Now this last one, this will be the sets dot png. So that's this image here. Um, then let's get these guys. And the distance label should go black if I click on the sets button. And the sets label should go white. All right. <clears throat> so now I need to define this time label, distance label, and sets label, right? So let me throw in another grid layout just below this one. And I'll give it a one row. So this grid layout now will be for these text uh, labels, right? So size and position. This one doesn't need to be as tall, so I'll change it to 0.05 instead of 0.1. Uh, top should be at 0.55 because of 0.65 minus 0.1. Right one, that's fine. Okay, now I need three labels. And the text color should be uh, black to start. So 0, 0, 0, 1. And this one will say time. And its ID will be time label. All right. Let's get two more of those. And this one will say distance. And it'll be distance label. And this one will say sets. And it'll say sets label. Okay, let's try to run it and see how many errors I get. Because usually if you code for more than 30 seconds without running things, you get errors, right? Okay, here I am. Uh, this actually doesn't look too bad. So time, distance, and sets, if I click time, it turns it white. Distance turns white, and that one go back, goes back to black. Sets, nice. Okay, I think I want this, the image grid, to be a little bit bigger. And also I need some space between that one and this uh, text input. So let's move everything down a little bit by 0.05 maybe. All right. So the labels go down, uh, the images go down, and actually the images should be bigger too. So I'll say 0.15, uh, which means I have to put my labels down even more. All right, let's try one more time, see how it looks. Hmm, good. All right, and if it's about the size of a phone, ooh, super good. I love it. Okay, very cool. So what do I need next? I need uh, some fields for my units and then something for the date. All right, close that. For my units, I need two text inputs. This one, uh, the hint text to let the user know what to write should be uh, quantity. Okay, and then the next one will say uh, units. Okay, and we'll give it an ID. <clears throat> so ID will be quantity input. This one will be units input. And let me let me do on. We'll see. Ya. I want to make sure they don't put in some text, right? It should be a number. Um, so maybe I'll think about how to implement that and I'll, I'll come back to it a little bit later. Um, I'm, they need position hints. All right. And all of these need size hint and position hint because they're inside of a float layout, don't forget. So size hint, uh, I want it to take up 0 0.1 of the height because that's what the other text input did as well. And this one should be at 0.45 uh, 
by 0.45 minus 0 0.05, so 0.4. But if I want to give everything some spacing, uh, really it should be 0 0.35. All right. And this one I want at the same height. Uh, but this one will be uh, maybe on the right. And then we'll have the width be like 0.4 or something. Or let's do 0.3. Okay. So that's the width of it. And then this one will be at uh, 0.4. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Hmm. Um, so let's see, there's a 0.1 here, and this is 0.2, and 0.1 here. So let me make those equal. Let me put this at 0.15, so it'll extend a little bit, okay, in the blank space. And then 0.15, spacing them apart, and then 0.15 on the side, too. So to do that, uh, the left one should go in. So here's the one on the left more. So this needs to go in by, um, I think that's right. Okay, let's check. Oops, that may have been too much. Did I, did I double it? I think I doubled it. Let's see, 0.875, let's try that. 425? Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, I'm happy enough with that. Um, and now let's get some date fields in there. I think how I'll do this is I'll have three separate uh, text inputs, kind of like how I have these two. Mm, but one will be for month, one will be for day, and then the last one will be for year. Okay? So three more text inputs. I'm just going to go ahead and copy these, because why not? One, two, three. Okay. And now they should be at 0.35 minus the 0.1 from this guy, and then also minus another 0.05. So let's have them be at 0.2. Uh, okay. We'll see what that looks like. They should all be at 0.2. And I'll have them each take up 20% of the width. Ooh, that'll look good. <clears throat> and then this one, let's see. I'll just say 0.9. I might play with these off scenes a bit, but nobody else really needs to see that. <laughs> 0.6 and then 0.3. Okay. So this one will be my months. So I'll say MM, let them know it's months. So month, uh, late month input. This one will be my day input. I'll say DD for day. And this one will be year input. Okay, and we'll assume it's the two thousand, you know, the twenty first century. Um, okay, let's run it. Hmm. Okay, these ones I'm gonna put back a little bit so everything's kind of lined up with this edge. So point nine, point uh, four. Okay, I still might play with that a little bit, but that has the functionality that I want, and I can scroll through here. I can type my description, uh, like push-ups, or maybe like pick up soccer, right? I can choose whatever these should be. I'll put in 40 minutes, and then, oh, whoops, let's see, year and month are backwards. So this should be 0.9 and that should be 0.3. Okay, so I'll put in like it was 2019 and it was the 4th of January. Okay, perfect. So let's go back to the code 
and oh, we need we needed two more buttons here: a back button and a add workout button. And since I don't have too much space, maybe I'll make those label buttons as opposed to images. Okay, so I'll say label button. Text is. Um, I'll underline this text so it looks more like a button. Uh, add workout. And underlining. Oops. Tell it that I'm doing some markup on the text because I'm underlining it. Um, and then on release, I'll say app dot add workout. Okay. In this app dot add workout function, I'm going to have to go through each one of these IDs and get the text. And probably I'll make sure that it's not like blank or something like that so that they can't put in some garbage. All right. Um, size and position, of course. So I'll say size hint is 0.5. Okay, of the width and 0.1 of the height. We should be at 0.1 and all the way over. Okay, and then one more label button, except this one will be on the left side. And instead of add workout, it'll say back. Okay, and then this one will load the home screen because that's where I want to go. And then let me, let me get some nice little canvas effects in there too. I love doing this, making it so when you click label buttons, they change uh, change the background color of them. Okay, so by default, the texture um, it won't show anything, but if uh, if self dot state is normal, but if you click it, then we'll say uh, utils dot get color from hex and we'll go 33bbff because I don't really know. Let's see how that looks. Okay, you can barely see a color change there and also the text is no longer there. So my issue is I'm using canvas rather than canvas.before. So I need to paint the canvas earlier Otherwise, the canvas gets painted after the text is painted, so the canvas overlays the text. But if I paint the canvas before the text, then we'll look good. And maybe they should be darker. So um, instead of 3-3, I'll say RGB. 3-3 um, maybe 6-6 six, six, DD. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Okay, it's something. It's fine. So I'll do the same thing for the uh, add workout button. Okay. And let it go. Nice. If I hit back, back to the home screen. If I add workout, it'll give me an error because I don't have that function defined yet. So it broke. Now we need to get that function defined, right? Okay, so let's go and make a new function. Uh, we'll call it, well, what did I call it over here? Let's see, add workout. Okay, this is my function, add workout self. So get fields from, um, or get data from, all fields. Okay, that's what we need to do. And add workout screen. And then probably we want to uh, make sure fields aren't some sort of garbage. If all data is okay, um, send the data to Firebase real time database, right? Okay, let's get all of the data. This is gonna take a second. Here's my add workout screen. 
I will start from the top and go down. Um, oh yeah, there's workout image. So all these, um, all the buttons in my workout image grid, that scroll view that I defined upon the app starting up. Let's see, here I am. I'll define this function now. So when you press one of those, I'll say uh, self, so this will be the main app. So self dot um, workout image. Ooh, how do I do this? I'll do partial uh, self dot update workout image, and then I'll pass it F. Okay, so when I when I click on one of these workout buttons. I'll call this special function called update workout image, which I'll define right here so we can see it. And that takes a uh, name of the file. And it just says self dot workout image is the file name. <clears throat> That's an okay way to do that. So when I click one of the buttons, it'll just set this variable with that uh, file name. Okay, so workout image. That is the first thing that I need in my add workout function here, right? So I have my self.workout image, but I don't need to get anything because that'll be set, okay? Um, now we need, let's see, workout image, the brief description, okay? So let me, let me set a variable, I'll say, Workout screen is self.root.id's um, <clears throat> workout add, add workout screen. So I don't have to keep retyping this. Okay, description input is workout screen um, dot IDs description input dot text. Actually, I want to do workout. I'll call it workout IDs and give it dot IDs there. So now I don't have to do this. I'll just say workout IDs. Okay, even quicker. So we already have the workout image. I'll say I already have workout image and self dot workout image variable. So I remember that is the description input, right? Next up is uh, these time, time, distance, or sets choice. But that one we've already defined because it set this variable, right? This option choice variable. So I'll say already have uh, option choice in self dot option choice. Okay, so we have three down so far. <clears throat> Um, then we have, let's see, time, distance, sets. That's all taken, taken care of by that option choice. Quantity, we need that one for sure. So quantity input is workout IDs, quantity input dot text, right? And now units input, units input is workout IDs, Units input dot text. Month input. Okay, same deal. Month input is workout IDs. Month input dot text. Next is day input. You're getting the idea. And then also the year input. Okay, so let's see. Uh, workout image. So I'll say I needed, so this is where I have to do my uh, sort of sanitation, where I make sure the fields that I just got, all of these guys aren't some kind of garbage, like the user didn't put anything, or they put like some text when I really need a, a number here. So. Here's what I'll do. I'll say if, um, I'll, I'll have to do each one again. So if workout 
image is uh, none. Okay, and then let me make sure that I initialize workout image to be none when my app starts up. So I'll say workout image is none. Okay, so if they don't click anything, it'll be none and this will cause an issue. Um, okay, if that's none, uh, how should I do this? Maybe I'll change the background color of that grid. Let's think about how I would do that. So if they don't select one of these workout images, um, yeah, let me try doing that. Let me change the uh, the background color. So I'll put a canvas on my grid layout here. I'll just do this, right? It should be the same color as the background normally. And then, hmm. Grid layout. Maybe I'll come back to that one. I'll think about it and I'll come back. A way to, to, to show that uh, they need to select a workout image. Okay, description input. So that one they can leave blank, so I don't really care. Um, they are allowed to leave no description, so I don't have to worry about uh, that one. Uh, Self.option choice. That one we definitely need to do. So if self.option choice is none, okay, and let me make sure that this is initialized to none at the start as well. Option choice is none. So if they don't select one of those, um, I'm gonna make all of those labels red. So I'll turn all of these labels red, okay? So let's see, uh, workout IDs, and then time label dot color should be totally red, right? And then I'll make the other ones red as well. So time label, distance label, and uh, what was the last one? Sets, sets label. And then I'll return because if anything screws up, I just want to quit the function. Okay, I don't want to do anything else. Okay. Now, next one is the quantity input. So I'll say, oops, if quantity input is blank, actually, no, I'll do this. Try um, int quantity is integer representation of quantity input. Okay, let's see, will this work if quantity input is, is just some kind of empty string? What do, I, what do I get? Okay, I got an error, good. So try to make this an integer, right? And if that doesn't work, so if I get some sort of exception, I wanna definitely return from the function and then um, let's change the quantity. Let's see, if they don't have any text and I change the color of the text to red, it won't do anything. So maybe I need to change the, um, I'll change the background of that text input. No, no, I'll, I'll assume that they've got some text in there. Okay, so I'll say, Workout IDs, um, quantity input, okay, dot color, and I'll have that be red. And then I'll return, I wanna quit the function. Okay, so that's good for quantity input. Let's do the same for units input. So I'll just copy paste, int units, the integer of units input. Right? And if there's some sort of issue casting whatever they put into an integer, 
then uh, obviously that's not okay. Oh, and actually, oh, sorry, units units can be a string. So I guess I'm gonna let the person go kind of crazy. So integer, yeah, they can have whatever they want as long as it's not blank. Okay, okay. So units, if units input is blank, um, we're gonna want to return and maybe come back to this as well. Because I think maybe we'll try to change the color of that field, the color in the background to be a different color so it's obvious what's wrong. Okay, uh, and then this one, the quantity, if they ran like 2.2 miles, that'd be okay. So let's do float here. Okay. Um, now month input, this one definitely needs to be an integer. Okay. So I'll say if, and I'll try again, try month input Sorry, it's hard to think and type sometimes at the same time. Um, month input. Okay, try to make try to make it an integer. All right, and we'll say accept. So there's some error there. Um, then we want to return for sure. And also, yeah, I'll come back to this. I'll make all of these, all the backgrounds of the text inputs red, but I'll do that once uh, I finish this section up. So we'll do the same for the day input. Int day should be day input. And then one more time for the year. Okay. And is that all my fields? It is. All right. <clears throat> so uh, I believe we can change the background color of a text input. So let's try that. Let's assume. Let's assume I click a workout image, and I click some option choice, but in the quantity input, um, I screw up. So I'll say workout IDs quantity input <clears throat> dot background color let's put this to red and see if that works forget about changing the, the text of the the color of the text okay let's give it a shot so I'll select something here oh I got an error <laughs> update workout image takes exactly two arguments three given Okay, so this um, returns some extra thing, which I believe is the widget ID. That was my error. <clears throat> All right, I'll click that. I'll put in something here, and I'll click one of these. Man, that looks nice. And then I'll hit Add Workout. Ooh, bam. Okay, so changing the background color of these works just fine. Now, what I want to do though is if they type something in here, I want the background color to change back to, to whatever it was before. So, how would I do that? I don't know what, it, what let's see. I know how to change it back. I'll, I'll set uh, something to the on text function. Yeah, so I'll say on text for any of these inputs, whenever a text is written, it will change the background color back to white. Okay, and I don't think white is exactly what these ones are. That's what my dilemma was, but let's see how it looks. So that was the, let's see, quantity label. Yeah, the quantity label. So I'll show you how that works. <clears throat> quantity here. So I'll say on text. So that means anytime text is written or deleted or something inside this text input, um, self.background color. We'll set it to completely white. Okay, let's go. And I'll show you that same thing. So first I'll show you how it looks any different if I click here. 
Oh, actually, no, that looks, I think that's the same. So that's perfect. Um, so if I put in stuff here and then I hit go, oh, it's an integer, so it, it was okay. <laughs> if I type something here, it won't like it, so it'll turn red. And then if I delete it, it'll go back. Perfect. Okay, so if they type something something wrong, it turns red, and then they can fix things. Nice. So let's put that on text function for all of my text inputs. Okay, so that's the units input. So whenever they write in there, it should turn white so it clears any errors from them trying to add a workout before. Okay, label button, nice. So I'll run it. We'll see that same functionality. So if I put some junk here and hit go, that turns red. But if I put something okay here and then add workout, or let's see if I put some junk here. Oh, my mistake. They're not turning red because I haven't had them turn red in this add workout function yet, right? <clears throat> so we don't need that anymore. That was re referring to the text color. I want to change the background color. So if units is blank, then workout IDs units input should turn red, right? Same thing for the month. If there's an issue, yep. So if there's an issue, I want to turn red. And I came back to it. If there's an issue here, the day input should turn red. And if there's an issue here, the year input should turn red. Okay, let's see. And actually, let me try not selecting one of these three. And let's see what happens. Boom, they all turned red. Okay, good. And then when I click one, back to black and white. Perfect. Um, quantity, I'll say something. Okay, it screws up. I'll put in a float and let's see if it works. Okay, it was okay with the float, that's perfect. And now it says you need units. Okay, so if I type something in here, um, I hit go. Okay, it doesn't like the months. Still doesn't like the months. Good, days. Still doesn't like it, perfect. That's what I wanted. Great. All right. So I've got my input sanitation, uh, making sure everything is how it should be. Except maybe these units. Maybe these I should make sure that they only contain uh, only contain letters. I'll worry about that later. For now, I for now I like what's going on. Okay. So <clears throat> I've made sure all my data is okay. So if I, if I get to this point here, then everything's okay to write to the database. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna need to be working with Firebase again and um, we'll, we'll do a post request and include our authorization token and all that good stuff. So the data that we're gonna be sending, so I'll say workout payload um, this will be a dictionary and it'll say, let's see, how did I have this going before? Workouts. Okay. This is what I want to follow, right? So workout image. Okay. So workout image is my workout, oh, self.workout image, right? 
And then next field will be the description. So I'll say description. Description is um, description input, right? Okay. Uh, likes. That should be zero for now because you don't start with any likes on your stuff. Number. Okay, so that's quantity. Okay, so number. Oops. Number is. Let's break the line here. Number is. Um, I'll say float quantity input, because I know that that works, because I've passed here, right? Okay. Next up is the type image. <clears throat> so type image is uh, self dot, what do I call this? Choice, option choice. That's right, that's what I call that. So that remember that's time or distance or sets png and units and that should be um, what did I call it units input units input okay so did I miss anything let's see how many keys I have one two that's an extra one so three four Five. And if I go look at my screen, oh, I think I missed the years. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Now I need to add in my, my date, which I didn't have when I originally was, was setting this up. So I'll add in a new key. I'll say uh, date. Okay, date. And then I'll say this should be uh, month. Actually, let's do this month input plus I'll do a slash um, plus day input plus slash two zero for 2000 plus year input. Okay, so this is uh, the standard American way of writing dates, month, day, year, as in January 1st, 2019. Okay, I believe that should be all that I need. So that's my payload that I'll be sending to Firebase. Now, <clears throat> I need to send a post request instead of a patch request this time, and I'll show you why. So I'll say uh, workout request is requests.post and then my URL will be https backslash backslash friendly fitness remember this is from your database here friendly actually I'll just copy that that's easier okay so that's my database and then I want to put it into my workouts um, my workouts key here all right, so I'm doing slash uh, workouts. Oh, whoops, and I need to have in here my local ID. Okay, remember this is my unique identifier that I've gotten uh, from signing up uh, for my app, okay? So this is my sort of top level in my app. That's like right here. And then my local ID is like this part and then I want to send it to my workouts key inside my own local ID, right? So slash workouts, and then got to end it with .json, and then I need to authorize my request because I've set up those rules in the previous videos. So auth equals, and then I'll put in my string formatters. This will be self.localID, so that I'll get this one, and then for the authorization, that is my uh, self.id token.
right? Perfect. And then last thing we need to do is actually send the data. <laughs> Don't forget that. All right, let's print workout request.json. So if we get an error, we'll know what happens. Okay, so we'll run the app and we'll try to add something here. So I'll click one of these. I'll say Eric test for the description. So it was distance and it was 10 kilometers. And this happened on uh, February 4th, 2019. Add workout. All right, uh, we got an issue. It did not like my JSON data. Oh, sorry, when you're posting or patching, so basically when you send data, your payload has to be in a string format. There we go. All right. Uh oh, it's not happy for some reason. Missing close quote. My close quote is right here. No, not happy. Here, I can do this. JSON dot dump to a string. <clears throat> That'll do the same thing as just wrapping this all in a single quote. Okay, let's try again. And I have to fill it all out. 10 days. Oh, that'd be a long time to work out. Add workout. Oh, you see here? You see how that tur turned yellow or orange? That's because it's been modified. So now I look at my workouts, and if you remember before, this was just a blank string, like this one here. But now I have this strange key right here. And if I open that up, <clears throat> Here's my workout with my description and the date that I had entered and the likes and the number, all of that data. The workout image, perfect, okay? <clears throat> now this is the reason why I used a post request instead of a patch request. Post request means I'm sending you something new and when you send something new to Firebase, it automatically keys it with some unique uh, identifier. So this is really handy if I want to send another one, which I can do just by clicking this again, okay, I'll click, bam, we've added a new workout. See how we have two now? And they have different keys. So now I, uh, that's perfect, that's just what I need. If I do a patch request instead, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so let me close out of the app, and we'll rerun it. Oops, it forgot my login credentials. That's no good, I wonder why that happened. Uh, new user at gmail.com. Sign up. Uh-oh, it's really not happy. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, this I was converting to string from earlier, so I don't need to convert to string anymore. That was from using old data. Okay, let's try again. Sorry, that wasn't supposed to be part of the video. But that's what happens. And I'm sorry about how long this video is getting. Okay, we got another error. Oh, dict and int, my friend ID. Next friend ID. Why is it not happy with that one? So that didn't work. Um, I had to do some quick debugging off, off screen to figure out what went wrong. And what had happened was before I had this um, Let's see, my workouts was just, uh, well, the format that I had my workouts before, it was different than this than this new one that I just showed you over here. Oh, whoops, that's not the right one. Is it this one? Yeah. So the format of this changed, 
So when I tried to read my workouts previously upon starting up the app, which was um, <clears throat> up here when I was trying to populate my, my home screen, it was screwing up with an unhashable type because I was trying to, um, it, was, it was this line here, trying to read an index from a dictionary. So that, that doesn't work out. Uh, so the way that you deal with that is workouts is no longer um, this this thing. That part, this much is okay, all right? But now I'll say workout keys will be workouts.keys, all right? And workouts.keys will get me this and then that, okay? Because it's all the keys inside my workouts dictionary now. Okay, so then I'll say for uh, workout key in workout keys, workout is workouts, and then workout key. So I'll, I'll get the key for each workout um, in the dictionary. Okay, so the first time it'll get this key and then I'll get all the data for that key so I'll get all that stuff and then this will be my workout okay so now uh, when I do workout and I try to get the workout image that should work so let's try again okay nice um, it loaded up and I've got a blank image there let's see why Error reading icons slash icon slash time. So, okay. So this is where I had the issue, this type image. So my workout banner, where was that? Here it is. <clears throat> okay. This doesn't need this icons anymore because that is already there inside my database. This is icon slash time. All right, I'll try it again. Nice. So um, this is what I got right here in the database when I do a post request. So my original intent was to show you what happens if I do a patch request instead. So let me go ahead and change the code so that we're doing that patch request. Maybe that's where I left off and before I had to cut out. I can't quite remember. Okay, so instead of post, well actually, let's see here. If I do a post request, let's find out what my ID is. Okay, so this is my uh, user at the moment. Okay, and there are my workouts. So let's do a patch request instead of post. I'll rerun the app. Uh, you can see I added another workout just, just right now, and it's populating. I mean, that's wonderful. Okay. Um, I'll do a new one. Distance. Four. Okay. Month, day, year. I work out, okay, my patch request. This is what happens with the patch request. <clears throat> so I no longer get this um, nice identifier for all my data. It just throws it in there. So that's definitely not what I wanna do. So we'll stick to um, the post request. Okay, so there you go. I think that wraps up this video. I've got that workout screen working and you can send new workouts um, and everything is working as expected now after uh, some quick debugging. Alright guys, hope that was fun and interesting. Sorry I think this video hit the one hour mark, um, but hey, that's coding. Alright, thanks for watching.